I'm Nasi Inglesis and uh, my practice is called Studio Ini. Uh, I'm from Greece, representing Greece here in the Biennale, uh, with the piece called Anipakoi, which means disobedience. Uh, and really in response to emotional states which are dynamic and transient, disobedience uh, tries to uh, disobey the idea that architecture and design needs to be static or emotionally inert, uh, brings a wall to the public and asks them to disobey the role of the obedient spectator, transgress a boundary, find a space within the wall, and in a creative way, create their own new space, reconstruct it uh, within it, and uh, get an experience of uh, sort of an empowering feeling of being able to ad adapt and reconstruct your own physical environment. So it's been a, a great um, project that happened in parallel both in London and Athens. Uh, the studio, Studio Uni has a base in London here and actually in Somerset House and in Athens. Um, and both, the attitude of both cities enabled it to work. Uh, London's diversity but also Athens sort of more maverick behavior and being a bit more creatively disobedient to try things that nobody has before, use machines for things that shouldn't be used. Um, we had an international team of engineers, um, designers, architects, musicians, um, and uh, who sort of came under the umbrella of Studio Ini, um, and a lot of Greek designers as well and creatives. So it's, it's really, although we're representing Greece, I think what also the Biennale shows very clearly, it's an international collaboration which is very much necessary in design. It's been really um, on a, a very short exploration, uh, but uh, being Greek and having experienced uh, the, the the large uh, immigration, the refugee crisis, how sort of the public themselves creatively disobeyed rules and acted on their own behalf to help and, and really showed a very um, humanistic attitude towards people coming in and on the islands and in Lesbos. Uh, it was great activity. Um, I did some research around the uh, visiting the refugee camps and uh, trying to understand where the challenges was and it was actually although my work is very much about the physical realm and how we make that uh, dynamic I have to say the challenges uh, although many were physical and lack of infrastructure the ones that the refugees seemed to struggle most with were the psychological ones the intangible uh, the unknown, the not knowing what comes next, and the lack of uh, communication platforms and proper and official formal support systems to allow them to process their papers, to know what could come next, how long they might be in that state, that limbo that they're in, um, and that the physical can be endured, it's the psychological which is harder. Um, and I found that quite intriguing and something, a challenge that is possibly one that can be tackled much better uh, and without the need of too many resources. I think uh, the Refugees Pavilion in LDB is really a beacon of what LDB should be about, that really borders and barriers don't matter. I mean, uh, the, my, our piece, Anipakoi, is is in a way a border that is permeable, it is a border that flexes um, and uh, I think uh, it should show that uh, uh, we populations, it, it's inevitable, we have to expect that populations are going to shift, we are going to have climate immigration, it's already happening, so we have to change our mindset about borders about earth and about how it's divided and about understanding really how to look at a more holistic picture of how do we accommodate and how do we build resources. Greece in many ways I think opened up their arms to, to refugees quite well but it hit very ma many challenges in terms of resource, in terms of capacity uh, uh, and it's really basically that you shouldn't 
just just because there's an entry point doesn't mean account the the accountability is not just at the entry point. We are all accountable for how the populations are shifting across the world. The skeleton of it, the what allows its behavior, is a steel structure. Um, and it's in, in what we call the material and structural logic that allows how it moves. It has, it's really a big spring and the bars are spring steel which are being twisted at different heights to allow uh, flexibility in different directions and tune the flexibility across it so it's not always the same experience as you move across it. Um, it's, yeah, and then the, the facade on the top is recycled plastic, HDP. Uh, we're really excited by the idea of recontextualizing a material and reusing it at an architectural scale, um, which gives an essence of almost marble, but it's a very light material, self-lubricating, which was ideal to keep the undulation and, and the movement uh, of the piece. Really, what I'm trying to achieve is, uh, I think it's what always my practice is about. Um, I, I study matter, but always in the context of cognition. So the human factor is always a center part of the design. I design with the human. This was designed with having to consider the disobedient element of the human within it and how it would behave and how they would move around it. Uh, so it is very important for my work at Studio Uni to be able to bring that to the public and to actually use it as a sort of unconventional experimental platform where I can learn from the public's reaction and for how they interact with what I'm trying to achieve, which is, we call it an augmented materiality, kind of a, a more dynamic physical reality.